Hello, Booktube. This is um, the fourth Big Wall Bookshelf. Um, it is the third shelf, and this is part two, a continuation of um, archaeology books. So let's get right to it. The first one here is uh, The Pleasure of Ruins. This is a reprint. Rose Macaulay. Um, this is a Barnes & Noble book, New York, one of their reprints. It was first published in 1953. Uh, and this edition was published by Barnes & Noble Incorporated with uh, an arrangement with Timson and Hudson. So the sections are, there's an introduction, but then it's Part one is art, fantasy, and affection. Part two is the stupendous past. Part three is ghostly street. Part four is the haunting gods. Part five is pleasures and palaces. Part six is a fantasy of castle. And part seven is a note on new ruins. Um, this is uh, illustrated. Um, here we go. So she's talking about how the ruins of the past have impacted the imagination and intellects of people in the past and the art and all those sorts of things. Traveler's accounts. So this is one that you can probably find fairly easily. It's really a good book. This next one here must have originally had a dust jacket. I don't know what it would have looked like. 150 Years of Archaeology by Glenn Daniel. Harvard University Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1976. My edition's a little worse for wear. It's originally published in 1950. And it's just what it says. is a history of archaeology. Uh, pretty standard work, at least back in my undergrad days. I I would imagine it still is. A fairly technical history of archaeology. A little different than some of the popular ones we've been looking at. And next here, we have introductory readings in archaeology, again by Brian M. Fagan, who we've run into before in these archaeology books. It's what it looks like. It's sort of something to be used in college. Uh, introductory Readings in Archaeology, Brian M. Fagan, Little Brown and Company out of Boston, and this came out in 1970. So, if you were taking a history in, of archaeology course, it would have by famous archaeologists or famous articles. So the first one is The Discipline of Prehistory by Graham Clark. Um, let me just jump around a little bit. Gordon Wiley, Air Photography in Peru. Sir Mortimer Wheeler, Stratigraphy and Relative Chronology. Um, let's see, Willard F. Libby, Radiocarbon Dating. Uh, Joe Benwee, A Paleo Indian Bison Kill. Uh, Brian M. Fagan, Hunter Gatherers of Guisho. Irving Rouse, Classification of Artifacts. Bruce G. Trigger, Settlement Patterns in Archaeology. V. Gordon Child, What Happened in Prehistory. Um, so that, that's just a, a little bit of a flavor of what these things are like. So that was from classwork we did. This one here, The Man in the Ice, Conrad Spindler. The discovery of a 5,000-year-old body reveals the secrets of the Stone Age. I don't know if you remember, this was all over the news back in the, the day. In 1991, the world was electrified by the chance discovery of the body of a man trapped in a glacier on the Otsaler Alps in the Austrian-Italian border. Uh, the corpse was almost perfectly preserved. Preliminary tests showed the this was a body of a Neolithic hunter who died some 5,300 years ago. So... Um, the Man in the Ice, the discovery of 5,000-year-old body reveals the secrets of the Stone Age. Conrad Spindler and a team of international science, uh, scientists. Harmony Books, New York, 1994. So this is the area, and they got a little red circle showing where they, I hope you can see it, where they found the body. 
There's the body as it came out of the ice. What was fascinating was what the body had with it. I don't want to get too gruesome on some of these pictures, but you can see tattoos on them, all sorts of stuff, so it's pretty neat. This here was another textbook I had for a class, Patterns in Prehistory, Humankind's First Three Million Years, Second Edition, Robert J. Wanky. 1984, Oxford University Press. I enjoyed this one. This is a good overview. Let's see. This picture of Charles Darwin. The dig there. Next, a little more of an anthropology type thing. Again, it's missing this dust jacket. They don't always survive. So this is Peter Mathiasen, the tree where man was born, and Elliot Porter, the African experience, E.P. Dutton and Company Incorporated, New York, 1972. There's a boobob tree. Big old pages of photography. Over by Lake Victoria. Then, pretty famous book here, Origins, Richard E. Leakey and Roger Lewin. What new discoveries reveal about the emergence of our species and its possible future? This was um, E.P. Dutton, in New York, uh, 1977. This is the search for um, ancient human types, Australopithecines, Neanderthals, and all that sort of thing. Good read. You can still find this around. So this volume, also without a dust jacket, here, you see a little bit of it, is um, The First Great Civilization, which is part of the History of Human Society series, edited by J.H. Plum. Um, this one is Lakita Hawks, The First Great Civilizations, Life in Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley, and Egypt, Alfred A. Knopf, New York, 1973. So it's a um, synthesis of the latest scholarship in archaeology for those areas. There's some pretty good illustrations. Another one without a dust jacket. The Prehistory of East Africa. Uh, by Sonia Cole. Introduction by Richard Carrington. Illustrated with photographs, maps, diagrams, and drawings. The Macmillan Company, New York. 
It's a National Union hand axe. And moving right along. Seton Lloyd, The Archaeology of Mesopotamia from the Old Stone Age to the Persian Conquest. Tim's and Hudson. This is uh, from a series called The World of Archaeology, and the general editor was Glenn Daniel. 174 illustration, Tim's and Hudson, 1978. And then finally, the last one on that shelf. A little mountain going here. <laughs> I probably had to redo that so next video. This is a Brian M. Fagan again. This one's called Return to Babylon Travelers, Archaeologists, and Monuments in Mesopotamia. Here's Mr. Fagan. This was um, Little Brown and Company, Boston, 1979. Coming upon the barren landscape between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the exotic adventures of the 19th century saw a dramatic confirmation of dire biblical prophecies. But they also suspected that the remains of fabled kingdoms lay with it beneath the sands. As they dug into the mounds and tells of Mesopotamia, present-day Iraq, these bold European and American archaeologists struck treasures beyond their wildest dream. The graves of the stupendous Old Testament cities of Nineveh, Babylon, and Ur of the Chaldees the palaces of Sennacherib, Nebuchadnezzar, and Belshazzar, evidence of the flood and countless other artifacts leading back to the birth of civilization. So, there's Austin Henry Laird. These sort of things. So, um, that is the shirt, third shelf of the fourth bookcase. The big wall bookcase. This is that. That was part two. The next section is again archaeology, um, all except for the last book, which is on mythology. And then after this last archaeology part, we'll we'll move into mythology. So thank you, booktube.